Hello and welcome to Daily Coaching's Lockdown Football Training Session. So today's session number four and I have four key parts of today's session. We're going to be looking at doing a warm up and we've got two different ball mastery exercises. And we've also got a goalkeeper diving reactions exercise as well. Now for the warm up, all you're going to need is a space and a ball. So go and grab yourself a space, go and grab yourself a ball and let's get started. Cool. So for this warm up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my space. I'm going to hold the ball in my hands and I'm just going to be bouncing it around. Try to see if I can catch it and move in different directions, okay? Try and increase the speed if you need to, to try and help us get nice and warm, ready for our activity. So bounce the ball, catch him, catch him, moving around in different directions. I go backwards as well. I go forward. Turning. And we're just moving around. Getting used to bounce the ball and catching it with our hands. This could also be quite a warm up for goalkeepers. Then if you need to go faster, you can do that as well. Okay, now if you want a little bit of a challenge, you can do it in one hand, so feel free to bounce with one hand as you go strong. Again, okay, bouncing as many as you need to. And then possibly going from left to right as well, okay? So again, increase that challenge and just help us with our coordination, okay? So go right, go right. Really focus on just the bounce. 
and the classic element of it, if you want to go onto the one with just one hand, feel free to do that. And if not as well, just sitting on me throwing it and catching or throwing it that catch. For those more advanced ones, you really want to try and combine those different uh, challenges together, okay? So one way you're doing it with your hands back, one way you're doing it with your left, and then Okay, a few different ones there. But give it a try and remember, make the challenge appropriate to you and then see how you get on. Brilliant. Cool, so that was our warm up. So remember, some of the key points from the warm up is making sure that we're doing lots of movement, changing our direction, changing our speeds, um, using our feet, using our hands, and also, most importantly, as well, for going into a session which will demand some decisions and also face us with some challenges, we're using our mind too. That was a really good warm up to get us going. Now, we're about to move into our full mastery exercise, and for this, again, you're just going to need a space and you're going to need a ball. So go and find that space again, go and get that ball, and let's get started. Cool, so for this full mastery exercise, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be predominantly working on some techniques and we're going to be using just one part of our foot, and that's the sole of our foot, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to stand in your face, you're going to put the foot on top of the ball, and what we're going to do is we're going to use the sole of the ball to roll the foot, roll the ball straight over to our opposite foot, okay? Exactly like this. So it's rolling from side to side, okay? We're keeping it light on our feet, and we're taking that ball with us, we're changing the direction in which the ball is going, okay, by using the sole of our foot. Remember what we said, the sole of our foot helps us control or keep control of the ball and also to change direction as well. A couple more of these in. Keep your head up if you can. So we know where the ball is, so we can feel it using the sole of our foot. And so on, okay, so using the sole of the foot to help us change direction of the ball. Um, Really important that we keep one or toes if we can because we want to make sure that, that movement is fluid and it happens naturally. Now, if say for example you're not as advanced, my advice would be this. Roll it, stop it, get your balance again. Roll it, stop it, get your balance again. Roll it, stop it, get your balance again. Now with that, it's really important that you keep your feet and shoulders apart because that's the area which you want the ball to travel into, okay? So, stop. Roll and stop, roll and stop, roll and stop. Again, we're just practicing the technique, so it's okay to slow down to begin with. But if you're more advanced, or you a higher ability level, then okay, what I'm expecting you to do is keep that movement continuous and repetitive. Okay, keep your head up the ball. And we're just snatching that ball with the sole of our foot to help us move it into the opposite direction. Okay? Now, that one's really important because say for example if the defender is coming into your right hand side and you haven't got enough time to react and actually move away from the area, what you might need to do is just get the possession of the ball onto the opposite foot. Okay? So it's onto your safe side, it's away from the defender. This is what this technique and this skill is really important for, right? Now, one of the next things we're going to be doing is we're going to move it on a little bit more. So this time, again, using the sole of our foot, we're going to help to roll the ball a little bit over a longer distance, okay? And also as well, it's gonna help us to move away from the situation too. So that one was if we can't move away, and we just need to protect the ball, protect our possession. This time we're gonna say, can we move the ball away and ourselves as well, okay? To still try and get onto that safer side, away from the defender. So, how you gonna do that, Tom? Is what you're doing, roll the ball, stop. Roll the ball, stop. Roll the ball, stop. Roll the ball, stop. Stop. Again, we're using that sole of our foot to help snatch the ball and change the direction in which it's traveling. So it's rolling, stop it. But I'm taking my body with me as well. Couple more. Again, keep your head up if you can. That's going to help you to be aware of what's going on around you. And see that movement of the defender. You stay going with you, and so on. Okay, so it's really important that we're taking our body with us using that technique. Okay, so when the ball travels, we're also traveling as well. Right, a good effective one to help us get away from defenders. Now, we're going to move on to one final technique, and this time, some people might call it a V roll. What's going to happen is you're going to look to try and see if you can move the ball 
towards you, and then back out again. So as an example, in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out. I'm going really slowly to begin with, because all I want to try and do is really focus on that technique and understand what I actually have to do. Because although it may look quite simple, actually, it's quite psychologically demanding, okay? Because you're thinking about, okay, what pattern do I need to do with my feet? Um, which foot do I need to use to help bring it up into my body and then away from my body? Okay, my work is focusing on using one foot predominantly at each move. So I bring the ball in, use my right, I push it back out using my right. Bring the ball in, use my left, back out using my left. Okay, it's really important that as you see, my foot comes towards me, the ball comes towards me, my foot extends, and also the ball goes away as well. Okay, and then I'm just quickly switching feet, be able to trap the ball, control it, and then react to bring it back in. So in, out. In, out, in, out. And again, as you become more, com more confident, start speeding up a little bit, okay? It's really important as well, not only am I changing the direction of the ball, but also changing the direction of my body too. In, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out. And imagine a defender in front of you. Okay, so the defender standing in front of me, um, I need to try and see if I can move the ball away from them first of all, so that's why I'm bringing it towards my body. And the second movement, as they approach me, I'm then moving the ball out and away from them. Okay, back out and away from them. Just very quickly again, so the defender's coming towards me, they to bring the ball towards me and push it back out again. Okay, so the defender's coming towards me, in, out. Okay, so I'm making two movements there. Ball towards me, then I'm moving back out. And in the game, we're in training, what you're going to try and do is the ball comes back in and out, you're going to accelerate to move away. Alright? A few more of them. In, out, in, out. Again, looking up if you can, see what's going on around you. Keep lighting your feet if possible, so you can bounce and move around, help you change direction quicker, and make the movement more rapid, more surprising. And had a better effect of disguising what you're going to do with the defender. Cool. And if you have assistance or help with you from somebody else, what they can do is they can maybe act as just a bit of a pillar, really, to stand in the way so you can actually realistically get the ball um, around something. Okay, so the defender in front of me needs to get away from them, then can push it around. So understanding the actual space that you have to work in. Um, in terms of making sure that you don't push the ball too close to the defender, all right? Um, feel free to change this up as much as you want, so you can do some different techniques within this. So at the moment we could only be doing, say for example, bring it in with my left, take it out with my left, but you could do something where you maybe bring it in with your left, take it out with your right, okay? Bring it in with my right, take it out with my left. Bring it in with my left, take it out with my right. Bring it in with my right, take it out with my left. In, out, in, out, in, in, out, 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 and so on. Okay, a few different ways to practice that technique there, but really and truthfully, this one isn't too physically demanding. We're just really trying to focus on getting lots of touches using the sole of our foot, on both our left and our right foot as well, and really trying to practice and develop these techniques and movements of the ball as well, okay? Give it a go, make the chances appropriate to you, and see how we get on. Right, so that was our ball mastery exercise, and I remember some of the key points to take away from that is that today we're looking at the technique, the technique of using the sole of our foot, both on our left foot and our right foot. We're looking at combining different movements, and we're looking at pushing the ball forwards, backwards, to the side, and diagonal as well. One of the key things to remember is that if you want to enhance and develop um, and become more comfortable and confident using the ball, using the sole of your foot, you need to repeat it lots of times, okay? Lots and lots of repetition. This is really going to help us to be able to understand how to master these movements. Now, we're about to move on to our goalkeeper reaction diving exercise, and for this you need a wall or a door, and you also need a ball, okay? Once you've got those things, let's get ready and we can get started. Right, so with this goalkeeper reaction exercise, it's quite a light exercise, okay? It's not too physically demanding. Again, we're kind of focusing on the techniques, but we're also just focusing on getting an understanding of how to move and adjust our body, and then also react and catch a ball as well, okay? So what you need to do is you're going to start on the floor this time. My advice to you would be, if you can, try and get a soft surface, because you're going to be not necessarily diving all the time, okay? But you're just going to be 
gently relaxing your body onto the floor, okay? Um, so you can react to cat to ball. Just now, don't start the floor. You're going to sit, you call my you're going to sit up position, okay? And what's going to happen is first we're just going to set the ball towards you and see if you can catch it, okay? That's all you're starting by doing. Remember what we spoke about in the previous um, session using that dummy technique, so making sure the ball doesn't hit in your face. And just see if you can throw it and catch, okay? Throw it and catch, throw it and catch, throw it and catch. And you're just getting used to catching the ball, throwing the ball as well. Throw a bit higher for a bit more of a challenge as well, so you might need to go back a little bit. Back up. So it's almost like you did a bit of a sit up here, you must have a bit of a jump to work out. Back down in here. Right, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to look to try and see if you can throw the ball to the side and you're just going to react by catching it and almost falling onto the side of your, your body, okay? So I'm going to throw it, catch. Back up, throw it, catch. Back up, throw it, catch. Okay, back up again, throw it, catch. Back up again. Try not to predict the movement, try and make it realistic so I'm sitting in my up um, straight right position. I'm going to throw it in and then I'm going to react. Okay, so I'm going to make some quicker movements out myself. Because even though I push it to the side of me, I don't necessarily know where the ball's actually going to go, okay? I know it's going to go to my left or to my right, but I don't know how high and how far it's going to come back. Okay, so just throw in a catch into the sides. Really making sure you're just practicing going down to the side as well. Okay, so you that. A couple more. Now, what will make this one really, really effective is if you have somebody there to help you and assist you, okay, you can constantly be facing in this direction, getting ready to prepare to catch a ball or to dive, wherever you may go, and that person with you will stand behind you, and then they will throw the ball, and then you have to react. Okay, that one will be really effective, like I said, to create natural, um, realistic reactions, okay, and also to keep you mentally and physically prepared to go on to either side, all right? If you do want to develop it even further, and like I said, only if you have a soft, uh, soft landing or a soft area which you can do this practice on, you might possibly want to either start with a crouch position, okay, or go to the side. Can I then react and can I go and catch it in that direction? Okay, same for example, my crowd position, feet body width apart, take to the side, and can I go down? Okay, I'm not going down too hard on the ground because this is quite a hard surface, all right? But like I said, there's a few different examples. Again, if you do have a soft surface or maybe if you're outside and you're on the grass, then again, naturally what you might be able to do is just fall through to the wall, um, and again, you can dive completely, all right? It may just be either you're still practicing that catching, or you might just be trying to see if you can hit it back away, okay? So you don't want to go past you. So a few different techniques which you can use there. Like I said, it's quite a light practice, um, also quite a fun one to do, um, and also doesn't require too much, as long as you have a wall, um, as long as you have a ball as well, and a bit of space, then it'd be quite fun try and create different reactions, and like I said, even more so if uh, you have somebody there to help you and assist you too. Uh, if you're of the younger age group, then my advice would be just simply work on the catching element of it. So it might just be simply on the floor, and you just throw in and catch it, okay? Throw in and catch it. And as you get a bit more advanced and developed, then you can start practicing diving, and then obviously you can make your way up in terms of crouch position, and then obviously fully standing as well, okay? Um, and as well, if you do want some more challenges, potentially adding in more objects, so maybe a bigger ball or a smaller ball, that'll be really good to again help us with our reactions because we don't know what's coming next. Okay, we're gonna to have to react more naturally. But give it a go. Remember, main thing, we're gonna catch a ball so we protect our goal, but also protect our face and make sure that we have possession of the ball. Give it a try, this is a fun one.
Cool. So that was the goalkeeping reaction exercise. Now remember, some of the key points to take away from that is that we was really focusing on the reaction part, okay? So we was moving our hands and our body, adjusting our hands, adjusting our body to react to the movement of the ball coming off of the wall, okay? Now it's really important, again, we get lots of repetition in that, but it's also important that we don't make it too physically demanding because we just want to focus on the technique part of it, okay? Now, we're now going to move on to our ball mastery exercise, and for this, you're going to need four objects. Again, I've got cones, but as always, if you haven't got access to cones, you can get anything from jumpers, jackets, um, shoes, toilet rolls, anything you can get your hands on, okay? You're also going to need a ball, and you're also going to need a space. So go and grab your four objects, go and get your space, go and get your ball, and we're ready to go. Right, so this ball mastery exercise, what you're going to do is you're going to sit out with four objects exactly like this. It's almost in a bit of a shape of a diamond. You're going to start with your ball by the um, cone, which is at the back. Okay, and what you're going to do is you're using the sole of your feet, so the bottom part of your feet, um, your left and your right foot, just to help you direct the ball move towards the cone in front of you. And you can do exactly the same, but this time moving backwards, okay? But you're always facing the same direction. So as an example, then you're using the sole of my feet, just to help you roll. Once I get to here, I can stop if I need to, and then using the sole of my feet to help me direct my ball back to where I started off from, okay? So you're gonna do that a few times, just gonna repeat those movements. So sole, forward, sole, back. Sole, forward, sole, back. Obviously the bigger space you have for this one, the better because you can get more touches in. My advice is with these, you have a small space like myself, then so just try and get the lower the touches on the ball, okay? Below the touch. Even if once you get to the cone, you end up just making a few repetitive movements side to side, that's absolutely fine. Just again, so you get a lot of repetition in using the sole of your foot. But the main thing here is you're directing the ball forward and backwards using that sole, okay? The left and right foot. So really want to make sure that all is under control using the sole of our foot. Again, I'm going to keep them on my toes so that I'm nice and ready to react and move my foot towards the ball and to direct where I want that ball to go to. A couple more. Okay, now you can repeat that as many times as you like. Just so again, get that repetition and just get used to using the sole to direct it forward and backwards as well, okay? But, like I said, really important if you build a bit of space to expand the area you're working in so you can travel further and you can get in more touches, okay? But that's the key thing here, getting lots of touches in. You're not just wanting to roll the ball towards the area straight away, you really want to do it under control. Okay, so you get lots of touches in. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Left, right, left, right, and so on. Now, what you're going to do, still face the same direction, because again, we want to face the same direction throughout. You're going to start on one of the cones, either the left or the right one, and what you're going to do is use the inside of your feet, okay, to help you direct and move the ball towards the opposite cone. So, I'll show you an example, and then again, we'll just do lots of repetitions of it, just to get used to it, become comfortable, and become more confident. So, here is my right control. Left. Hit right control left. Once you go to here, hit my left, control my right. Hit my left, control my right. Again, like I said, it's got a bigger space, obviously a lot more beneficial because you can get a lot more movement to be. But I'm going to take my time and I'm going to try and get lots of touches just to get that repetition going. So hit my right, control it. Hit right, control it. Hit right, control it. Hit left, control right. Hit left, control right. And so on. Easy with this one as well, similar to the sole of the foot. Try and see if you're a bit more advanced, keep your head up. And you're just moving the ball between your feet, okay? So again, you know that ball is all the time. If you are working in a small space as well, um, similar to, I think, one of the previous sessions that we've done, where we move the ball a bit more repetitively, you can do that as well, okay? But again, try and try to learn this technique we're showing you. If not, then it could just be in, out, in, out, in, 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 in. Okay, so you're just constantly hitting it back and forward, or back and to, should I say, the opposite foot, okay? So if you can, you really want to try and learn that technique of Hitting the inside of one foot, controlling it, 
or uh, well, slowing down the pace of all the other ones. So hip control down, hip slow 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 down. All right. So do a few more of those, a bit more repetitive, Miss Rowling, and I'll show you the final look of this exercise. Done the long way we're using our sole muscle to move forward and backwards. We've done the inside of our feet to help us push the ball and slow the pace of the ball down. Now we're going to do a mix of the two. Okay, so we're combining our movements together again. Similar to what we've done with quite a few of these ball mastery or ball circuit movement exercises. So, my start at the back, using the soles to roll me forward, then I'm going to my right, then I'm going to my left, then I'm going to sole, then I'm going to sole. challenges on this one. On this final one, as you're moving with the ball, get that person to, who's assisting you or helping you out or overseeing you just to call out some direction. So I might be turning forward and go right, left, back, forward, back, right, and so on. Okay, so you're getting again some natural and realistic reactions coming out of that. Right? Quite a tough one uh, mentally and psychologically, but again, very rewarding uh, technically as well, right? Give it a try. Cool, so that's the end of session four. So let's just very quickly recap on some of the key points to take away from today's sessions. So remember, today wasn't too physically demanding, but we was really focused on the techniques of things, okay? So the techniques of our ball mastery, understanding how to use the sole of our feet, how to push it in different directions. We was using the inside of our feet at times, again, to travel in different directions. And it's really, really important that today we've got lots and lots of repetition in with that, okay? So again, we can come more confident and comfortable using the ball and really become true masters of the ball. Also as well, we focus on some of the goalkeeping technique exercises as well, where we really focus on the technique of moving and adjusting our body, reacting and catching as well. I hope you've liked today's session. As always, please make sure you subscribe, like, comment and interact with the video. Make sure you let us know how you get on. We'll share some of that good feedback. And as always, please let us know any types of sessions or exercises you want to see included and we'll try our best to try and do that. Okay, I hope to see you in the next episode and I'll see you then.